Hello and welcome back to the United by Football podcast. I'm Abs. And I'm Thomas. And today we have the fabulous Abdul. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Abdul. Oh. Today we have the fabulous Kat Haddad. Kat, Hello. how are you? I'm very well. Thank you guys for having me. Some would say we're kicking it with Kat today. Oh, I love that. <laughs> You've done your research. I know research. I mean, you are sitting in. So I walk in and they say, do these numbers, do you, do you remember what this is for? <laughs> and honestly, I had to really dig deep into my memory for this. I cannot believe the attention to detail here. The first time I went to Anfield, I say the first time, I've only been once. The one time I went to Anfield, <laughs> this was the seat that I sat in. And wow. they've gone and put the numbers, like the row, the aisle, unbelievable. Yeah, we, we, we did read a bit of your blog. Yeah. When I say we, um, Matthew, special clap, mate. That's Matthew, that's Matthew, that's well Matthew. deserved, Matty. Well done. The effort, it's crazy. So thank you so much. So yeah, no, look, it's a pleasure having you on this week. You know, like we said last week, you know, the accolades with you know, worked with up to sport. You've done your women's World Cup coverage, men's World Cup. You're all over TikTok and Instagram. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Am I doing too much? No. no, no, no. It's good, and it's a pleasure. And you know, you talk football. You know, you know, you know ball. So oh, I'm good at pretending. I do. So, oh, nah, mate. Joking. Sometimes that's what you need, to be honest. Well, Truly. What, what do you think I'm here? Oh, <laughs> I just pretend. Yeah. Look, well, we'll kick it off. Uh, Manchester United versus Liverpool in the FA Cup. What a yeah, game. this was massive. Your lovely, lovely Liverpool. I know. A tough day at work for, for my boys. But what I will say, and we talked about this off yeah. air, when you work in the game, I can kind of stand outside. I mm. can stand and look at the game objectively. Seven goals... That's exactly what you want from any kind of FA Cup clash. As a neutral fan, imagine that. You're loving it. You're it's, loving it. Look, it's not the result that we wanted, but what an amazing game. Yeah. I mean, well, it's called the Theatre of Dreams for a reason. Mate, Kobe Mainu was in the centre of that <laughs> Theatre of Dreams. Hey, what a player. He got yeah. an England call up. Uh, did. I think it was this morning. Yes. Wow. Let me, let me run you through how crazy this game actually was. So there was a total of 53 shots, uh, 23 fouls, Six yellow cards, one red card, 61 throw-ins, 15 goalkeeper saves. And we ended up with Bruno Fernandes at centre-back and Antony at left-back by the end of the game. So that's how crazy that game actually was. Cap, I'm just going to let you know, any stats he's already researched, he's actually got a nickname called the Stat Merchant. So there's no, just don't he's, even bother asking him any stats. He's, got, he's already got Yeah, but he's an accountant. I expected this <laughs> level of detail. Yeah. Do you remember David Middleton? Should I? Do you remember the guy from the footy show they used to bring on just to talk about... He was the Stat Man. The stat Man. That's you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that. You know, I love that. We had, we had posters of him growing up, so <laughs> every football account. <laughs> Guys, Anthony scored. That's when you know the world is gone, absolutely. I, I thought the world was ended. I started saying goodbye to all my friends and families. I it thought I was getting flashbacks. The end. Uh, Unbelievable. We'll, we'll, we'll run it through. Um, the game started off with a McTominay uh, tap-in. Uh, Garnacho, who was, again, sublime on that game. Cooked. Um, took a shot. Great save by Kelleher. Um Tomine at the back end, taps it in. And then Endo basically uh, tied up the game. We thought so. What's hard off? What's your thoughts on Japan quickly? Sorry, this is off script. What's your, what's your, what's your thoughts on Japan? Maybe, maybe as a nation, their mm. culture, their people. What's your thoughts? Oh, I, I've not been to Japan, mm -hmm. but I have no complaints about their culture, their food. They create great footballers. Ooh, okay. yeah. that, that leads perfectly on to my next I point. I had a feeling, you know. Do you reckon they're a top 15 nation in the world? Top 10, 15 nation in the I world? I think they are an underdog. I think, it, mm. I take that back. I think Japan are often associated with being an underdog in the footballing world. Mm -hmm. But all you have to do is watch a World Cup to know, more, more often than not, they're not really the underdog. They have been, like, they're a good footballing yeah. nation. Them and South Korea. Yes. Oh my God, Abs, you're off the podcast. <laughs> Kat, you're the new co-host. <laughs> Abs, you're off the podcast. No, mate. Look, I've, I've always said it's easier to be the hunter than the hunted. Mm. And in the World Cup, they're hunting people. Mm. By, by that, I mean they can sit back and play their football and not yeah. have to worry about expectation <laughs> and levels. Uh, if you want to dig in and really tell her what you said about eight weeks ago, he said that Japan are a top 10 football nation yeah. and would likely replace Italy or Croatia yeah. in that top 10. A Croatian is saying that. Yeah, I'm Croatian, yeah. It does add some validity to his statement it when does. he says that. But is it? It's not wrong. But but I, look, I'm being honest. As a as me watching football, I think behind Spain, they are honestly on the eye. They are beautiful to watch. Yeah. You watch 90 minutes. They they play the most beautiful football besides probably Spain that I've seen. Yeah. Look, I I don't disagree with you on a on a skill level. I think Japan 
are incredible and I think it's in their – similar to the Spanish, it's in their blood it is. to be passionate and to be uh, right down to the finest details mm. of the game. They understand it. But I also think we're seeing an evolution in Asian football and yeah. Asian sport mm. and a lot of these clubs that uh, – sorry, clubs, nations, but clubs within these nations that mm. traditionally didn't have the resourcing or the funding or – they didn't have the talent that was coming from overseas and whatnot. We're seeing a lot more of that in Asia, and I think we're going to see that Asian clubs are contenders for those top spots. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy personally. Look, that's that's a lot. I, of I agree with that <laughs> statement, but to say top ten for me, top I think tens are it's pushing it. A yeah, little bit. maybe maybe in 2024 it's facetious, but I don't think it's without of reach. Like, I think it's within reach. Yeah, they yeah. should have won the Asian Cup this year. That should have been in that Japan. form. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. Well, look, Endo should have scored, but unfortunately. They got called offside, so we'll move <laughs> back to that conversation. Back um, to Manchester United. McAllister ended up scoring a really nice goal. Yeah, he's good. Um, past Sonana. And then Salah, again, basically copy-pasted McTominay's goal. Nunes took a shot. He actually done well to kind of get around, take the shot on his right. And then after the save came a tap-in for Salah. Um, as we said, Anthony equalised in the 87th minute. I was shocked. How that good was, was that goal, though? Great goal. He wasn't even facing the goal. Half, like, he literally, <laughs> as he turned, took the shot. But a lot of the goals that game were very like... It's weird. Like they just rolled. Yeah. In, and, and look, you know, I'm no Kelleher. From or further back as well, if it seems. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, Don't you dare say you're going to save that. I'm, Don't you dare. No, play, no, no. no, no, no. Look, I'm a keeper. Oh, here we go. <laughs> but I'm no professional keeper. I'm barely an amateur keeper. So... Cat, what he's saying is basically talk to Optus and try and get him signed something. <laughs> that's, that's what he's basically trying to say. Uh, look, Chelsea need a keeper, so... Don't you dare. No, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I have to say, fine margins the fine this game. Um, I think that there were a lot of shots, as we said, there were 53 shots come down the game. And there were a lot of them that could have, should have, would have been goals on another day. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, again, that goal from Anthony turns around, takes a shot, nine times out of 10, he doesn't score that. That yeah. one time that goes in, it goes in. That was just the start of it for him though. It was. C can I pose you a question before we move on to extra time? Mm. Do you reckon this is the best 90 minutes that men you have played against the top big side? Top six side, sorry. This year. In some time. Yes. Yeah. I mm. mean, man, you've had a terrible 12 months. Yeah, true. Th they've had moments, like really mm. good moments, but I feel like the one constant headline with Man United is frustration. It's what's Ten Hag doing. It's yeah. all that kind of stuff. And this was a different scoreline for you guys. The Manchester United fans that, are fr that I'm friends with, they finally reposted something <laughs> about United. I was like, what? You mean United are still playing? That's crazy. Because... <laughs> If I was just following my United friends, I would have thought that they, you know, stopped playing yeah. nine months ago. 2013, mate. That's yeah. when they stopped. But um, it kind of does lead into, I guess, probably where this conversation is going to go. And it's what Ten Hag did in that game. Yeah. But I to throw a question back at you, Talk to me. was it their best game or was it one of their best games recently because he threw a spanner in the works and just mixed it up? Put it this way. This 120 minutes saved his job. Wow. Ooh, that's that a big statement. This 120 with Big my statements only from him. Can I, we love it. We love I, it. I agree, small man, big statements. <laughs> Simple as that. Look, uh, the best 120 minutes man you have played this year, and it's saved Ten Hag's job. Can yeah. I Simple can I actually that. give you an interesting start? It, ten Do you Hag, get what I'm saying on this? It's going to be a long ten, 60 minutes. Ten Hag, if I remember this correctly, since he started the job at United, has had 61 weeks. Since Ten Hag started at Manchester United, Klopp has only had 57. I don't know why. I'm sure it's true, but I don't believe it. <laughs> How would you want me to react to that? Because you got to remember, the season that um, Ten Hag started, mm. Klopp was Liverpool barely made fourth. You remember yeah, that that's season? That's true, that's true. And even last season. No, you're, like this is the first season Liverpool mm. has been consistent. Yeah. For, for quite a few seasons. Yeah. So it's been a good season for us. But I also have to wonder in terms of those wins. Yeah. Where, what, like, how big were those wins? For Liverpool, United. In comparison to one another. This is this is the problem I've realised. United don't draw very much. They either win or lose. Right. They but stat pad against the Burnleys. You look at last year. No, no, no. You look at last year. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was either last year or this year. At, at one point, 24 games in, they were like 11, 2 and 11 or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, it was absolutely... Cost of a toin for that. A cost of a toin? <laughs> Toss Toy. of a coin. Yeah, it's going to be a long day at the office, sure. Cost it was point. a long day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to use that from now on. Which one? Cost of a toy. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, That's my brain in action. Welcome, guys. 
It's a pleasure having you on. Yeah. <laughs> Look, she's on arrived. Well, it looks like you've played your 90 minutes then. Um, we're going to move on to extra time. I'm, what I'm a perfect segue. <laughs> um, here's where the madness begins. So going back to what you two were saying, I actually think this was United's best game I'm being honest, yeah. because they didn't sit back. Mm. They actually attacked Liverpool. Mm. And I also don't think Liverpool at their best. Mm. They were nowhere near the Liverpool we know, the Liverpool we love, the defensive Liverpool, the one that's, just, I'm pretty sure they're the second best defensive team in the league as well. Mm. That's not the Liverpool we saw. No. No. Like to concede 28 shots to Manchester United. To Manchester United of all people. Um, says a lot. So... United turned a few screws, had momentum go their way when Rashford scored the equaliser. Mm. So basically, yeah. if you look at the... Um, the he needed that. Yeah. On a personal level, oh, Rashford needed you that. You took the words out of my mouth. There's, it doesn't matter who you are, what team you support. No one wants to see Rashford benched. Correct. Day in, day out. Like, no, maybe you feel differently about this and that's fine. Once again, this is my more objective football brain. But Rashford, you know, he is a talent and... It's been a bit of a weird situation for yeah, him. Yeah. It's good to see him out there. It's good to see him getting goals. And his reaction said everything. He was so happy. If, if, he, if he could rip off the skin off his chest, he would. <laughs> yeah. he, he was that passionate well, about it. As I, as I like to call him, MBE. Mm. MBE, Marcus Rashford. Um, great talent, as you said. It's just consistency. Yeah. And, That's a thing, yeah. And, and look, you know, I put up a poll yesterday or the day before on our Instagram. And oh God, our good go. friend, Kevin KG, um, pretty much tried to tell me that Rashford, he'd take Rashford over Saka. I can't take that. No, no, I, I agree on that. I agree. Yeah, because no, I don't agree with that. Th there's levels to the game and there's consistency. And <laughs> there's levels to the game. Th there is. Because he, I love Rashford in terms of the, I, I've said it multiple times on this podcast, in terms of confidence and mental health for these players, I want to see all the players do well. Yeah, of course. When you look at players like Werner and Havertz, for example, at Even Chelsea. Even Sancho, if you want to bring it back to me. Sancho going back to Borussia Dortmund as well. You see the confidence grow. That was like chalk and cheese oh when he made words. that move back. It was like a different person. Have you seen the meme where he, he came late for the for the medical at the Dortmund and then uh, Dortmund actually reposted and uh, the caption was, sorry, so because he never apologised to Ten Hag at United, he goes, and then Jaden said it himself as he walked in, he goes, sorry guys, I'm late. But he said it twice. Oh my God. <laughs> you got to rub it. Just, Just the way you rubbed it. Listen, I want to get to Harlan's brother. By Harlan's brother, I mean the Norwegian TV reporter. Mm. Did everyone see what happened with the Norwegian TV reporter? Okay, can we, can we... Um, Mate, extra time, extra time, schmuggle, schmuggle, whatever. Nah, nah, look, we have to talk about, uh, we're going to get... Cat Haddad, you lost, I'm sorry. I want to talk the extra time. We, we're going to get to that. Just yeah. give us a second. Quickly. And did you see Anthony's reaction when he got moved to left back? No, I missed that. So you could see when they got into the huddle at half time of extra time. Mm -hmm. He turns around. You could, you could tell when he told him, you're playing left back. He turned around as if you've just told him like... <laughs> your wife's pregnant or something like that. And then he wasn't ready for that news. Like, <laughs> he, it, it was ridiculous. But you know what? He's got the work rate. I have to, I, like, we give him a lot of crap, but he's actually got a good work rate mm. when it comes to tracking back and dealing with all that. Uh, that's, that's bare minimum for a professional footballer. Yeah. Like, to be honest. But considering who he had at left centre back next to him, Bruno Fernandes, mm. who then Ericsson ended up playing in the six. Brother, brother, they were speaking Portuguese to each other. They're fine. But it's, it's fine. just, no it's, it's absolutely insane how... He just threw something together and then we actually got a decent performance out of the team. And Ahmad Diallo oh, yeah. scores the winner. And you know what the, the interesting was is it's the youth. And I've said it for ages. Mm -hmm. Give these young ones a go. You know, Ahmad Diallo, Garnacho, Kobe Manu. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've let a few go as well. But when you give these three or four and make them the core of the team, you're going to see effort. Mm -hmm. Garnacho played all 120 minutes and ended up playing that pass in the 121st minute to, to get the goal for... Yeah, wow. Well. Did you see uh, Mark, Gold, Mark Goldbridge's reaction on the fair TV? Oh. <laughs> Dalo, Dalo. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> the, the whole set got torn up. I'm talking jerseys off the wall. Really? He's, yeah, he's, a, he's a character. You know what? On to, let's, let's role play a little bit because okay, I've got in it here. So I'm Klopp. I'm Klopp. Do you want to be Klopp? I'm Klopp. Okay. So uh, he turns around and tells him, normally intensity is the name of your game. <laughs> so how come it was a bit difficult in extra time? Bit of a dumb, am I doing the German accent or no? Okay. Bit of a dumb question, I feel. We have played, I don't know how many games recently. I don't know how many games. You know what I played exactly? That sport. I'm really disappointed with that question, but you thought obviously it was good. So too many games. Oh, come on. You obviously not in the, not in the great shape. And I have no nerves for you. Sorry, I'm not looking in your direction personally, but I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just pointing that out. I would take it personally. No. But mate, that is absolutely 
Mourinho masterclass. That, that's uh, like Mourinho he, 101. You, you know what? He gets away with a lot. As what? a Liverpool fan, I'm, uh, you know, you're being a Liverpool fan. Mm. He gets away with a lot. A <laughs> yeah, lot of his tantrums, a lot of... He's not a, he's not a good loser. Who is I, I don't care for my manager to be a good loser. I just don't want them to want to lose. Can you imagine Mikel said that? Different style. Different style. He, he was true. under Pep. He's cool, he's calm, he's collected. He's a different character to Klopp. To your point, Klopp, he was giving us a Mourinho moment. Yeah. Why do people love Mourinho? Because he, you don't know what you're going to get from him. And I know Klopp is a polarising character, yeah. but when he's your coach, you like it. Yeah, look, I, I know what you're saying. Like, I like it in the sense of my manager stands up for, for his players, for his club, but it's the reaction for me. Yeah. Well, don't give me, well, listen, if you get, I'm playing devil's advocate. You stood up when Arsenal got robbed against Newcastle and it was a 25 minute pod, uh, episode on the podcast oh, yeah. saying Ateta is right uh, it's the uh, yellow button <laughs> of, of, the, of the whole thing so <laughs> play devil's advocate I'll, you got I will flip the tables Poch gets away with stuff that Ten Hag doesn't the amount of times I've heard Poch compare his project yeah. to Mikel's project and, and the projects of Eddie Howe and so on and so on and no one says anything. But we're, if Ten Hag turns yeah. around and says it, he gets brutalized in the media. I'm telling you, there's double standards. Ange Postacoglu with nine men plays a high line. Mm. Nine men is on the halfway line with three, four defenders, whatever it was. He's coming to Melbourne. Careful with the words. Be nice. <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm showing my true colours, mate. <laughs> and, I would rather not go to Melbourne. Oh God, here, oh God, here we go. Than have to sit there and conform with these Spurs fans. No, don't change who you are. I'm Don't not. Change who you are. Look, obviously, I'm not going to turn around if I interview him and, and say, you just go off at him and, and all that. That's not me, mate. Mate, it's, it's you, professionalism, wouldn't, you man. wouldn't wash your hands for a week. Don't even lie if you shook his head. You wouldn't wash your hands for a week. Talking about yourself. But if I met Jose Mourinho, I'm not showering for you. I'll be honest. He's my favorite coach of all time, by the way. <laughs> Has anyone I, seen the, the Mourinho documentary that's coming out? No, not yet. In 2025. Confirmed by Netflix. Oh. It's going to be the same producer that uh, made Beckham. Oh, oh which was so good. It's going to be cracker. Well, you mentioned Jose Mourinho and great Chelsea moments. Oh, oh my God, what a segue. It's we're going we're gonna to segue into another great Chelsea win. 4-2 um, against Leicester in the FA Cup. One of the few, to be honest. Um, quick quick run through. Chelsea were up 2-0 in no time. A uh, few you know, sweaty goals, if you want to call it Who that. Who scored the second one? Sorry, just one more time. Scrappy. Cole Palmer. Scrappy. Col uh, cold Palmer. It's Chelsea. Uh, most do you have his tattoo yet? I do. It's actually, I'm not going to go. That's a different podcast. I'm not going to leave my shirt up. It's a different podcast. Uh, but yes, it's- a, If I, you I, told me that he had cold, cold yeah. Palmer just tattooed on his chest, I'd believe you. But it, the thing is- Because I've been with you guys for an hour <laughs> and I reckon you said his name like 30 times. Yeah. So the thing is, I haven't got the tattoo. I've just got the, the, um, the emoji of the ice cube. Yeah, tattered. that's all that, you that, need. That's all it is. <laughs> so when everyone looks at it, everyone just knows that- it's ice cold, Palmer. Fair enough. Right. He's got him etched in his in his brain. It sounds yeah. a bit and what a player! What on, a the on the tip of his tongue as well. Mm. So um, yeah, hot start for Chelsea. Kukurea, Sideshow Bob, as I like to call him. Um, <laughs> Scott, this is right, he's yeah, got beautiful no. hair. Got I don't know how like aerodynamically, right? When you're running, just like, stay there. <laughs> I don't know how like it's amazing. Uh, do you think it's hairspray? Or? Those are some tight curls. Yeah, I mean, it's are you jealous of his haircut? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying mine's not? No, I'm just joking. No comment. No, no, Thomas, I think Thomas, how dare you? Do you know what? I'm treading on a fine line. <laughs> like I said with Klopp, mm. I love that he's just doing his thing. Mm. Kukure is just doing his thing. This is who I am. This is what I look like. This is my hair. I'm embracing it. <laughs> go off. The wrong fullback is in modeling by the looks of it. Then there you go. It's not sure. Well, shouldn't it be Reese James. Kukure with his. Uh, <laughs> With his beautiful uh, Not black everyone's box. taste. Mate, though, just, be, just because Chelsea attended L London Fashion Week, we don't need to talk about Cucurella in his hair. <laughs> another anyway, another person with great hair. Um, Sterling oh was, oh. was chopped from behind. Uh, got a penalty and unfortunately yeah. got saved. Um, Fortunately. Do you reckon St Sterling should be on penalties? No. <laughs> Thank you. He's, he misses a lot of penalties. Yes. Who would you put on penalties? Palmer. No, okay, okay. Did not see that coming. No, no, no I thought no, I would have no, guessed no, like Petrovic or something. <laughs> yeah. Look, personally for me, you guys don't have a, aside from Sterling, an experienced penalty taker yeah, in that well team. Yeah, that's why he's there. The, the brother scored, Cold Palmer, the brother scored against Manchester City and that commentary is the best commentary I've heard in probably four or five years. <laughs> City's boy has come back to Hawthorne and has become Chelsea's man. Well, look. Come on. 
It was a good mood in that first half. Unfortunately, um, the Sassi ruined all of that. Comes the second half. Cat, let me put this way. Is that, should they introduce a Puskas style award for own goals? If so, does he win it? It's up there. That is a, that is a strong contender <laughs> for the Puskas own goal award. It was beautiful. Like, the shot was just like if you. If that became the right the right goal for him, unbelievable goal. The right goal, unbelievable <laughs> goal. In fact, if you start the game from that moment, you go, "What a goal!" Just, just don't look at the like. And then you realize he got it for his own team. Just show that moment, and then like cut to them celebrating or something, and you would not be able I to. Know. Tell <laughs> uh, oh god! You, you know what though? I think. Um, they made it a lot harder for themselves. Yeah. Like, you, That's what it, we do. It's Leicester. That's what we do. All right, I can understand it's Burnley and Sheffield and Luton. They're in the Premier League. Mm. This is a championship team. Ah, that's good. Oh, yeah, but a championship team of like one year. Thank you. Like they are a Premier League team. And they're, they're, going- there, they're there because they've made some very poor decisions. Yeah. Transfer wise. It's, it's fair. And that's why Chelsea also called the blue billion pound uh, <laughs> bottle jobs. So. Wait, what, uh, what was the last year Gary Neville, uh, his club won a championship? Gary Neville. Mm. Um, 2013, yeah, thanks. So, 2013. So, he, oh, his I opinion thought, is. Listen, I thought we were talking about his coaching career in Sevilla. Or Valencia. Valencia. Sorry, Valencia. That's, that's another moment for the for the, uh, for the Rupa Bill. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, no, look. Um, Palma and Chukomenka uh, pretty much linked up for to make it 3 2. And then uh, your boy, Noni Madueki, has got a really, really, yeah, really that nice was goal. Gorgeous. I'm, I'm going to fill you in. Some say I've got a laugh like Madueki. <laughs> so, who's, who's some. Uh, one, two, three, <laughs> four. So if if by any means Abs does a funny joke, which is very rare, it's probably yeah. once every six episodes, hopefully it's today. Hopefully today I get um, to hear you, it. You're going to hear it and let me know. Just, just stop the podcast. I'll, let me f- know. I'll let you know immediately. So just p- t- picture me with dreads and uh, yeah. obviously the rest of the rest of the thing, which is not going to be. I've got a question for you to, to, uh, to diverse from a very dangerous political topic. Has oh. Pep made a mistake selling Cole Palmer? No, because look how happy you are. Me personally, yes, but yeah. I'm talking about Man City as a club. No. You know what? This is really funny. I'm going to troll back to a conversation we just had outside <laughs> about fate. I think it is very the, – the, where a player is, the manager that they are with, all of these things are what contribute to the player that they are. Mm. And I strongly believe the same way Salah – no one was talking about him when he was at Roma and then, you know, arrives at Liverpool and everybody's talking about him. Yeah. Palmer, young, yes. Mm. Granted, he had time. I think Chelsea needed him. He Chelsea have provided the platform for him to stand out. Yep. And you're talking about him because he made that move. If he was at City, I don't think we'd be talking about him the same way. He won't get minutes. He won't get minutes over there. Well, look, I think Foden... He's ahead of him. Yeah, Foden's, Foden's ahead, of him. ahead of him. Mares left. Personally, I think he was planning to keep him mm. because he sold Mares. Mm. And I think he bought Doku after he sold Palmer. Mm. So yes. Doku was always a contingency player. But Doku was always going to be on the right. Sorry, left, yeah, left, left, left. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Look, um, other than that, my only question I think to both of you is, what did Chelsea need to do to like mm. fix this whole kerfuffle that they've put themselves in? What type of profile do they need? Who do they need to let go of? What do they need to bring in? Because I think we've talked about it. Mm. What do you think the solution? Is? Yeah, this is the the perpetual question. <laughs> the million dollar question or the it's, billion it's dollar question. The bil- <laughs> uh, tr- trillion dollar question actually by Chelsea standards wow but it's 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 so hard to answer yeah you know I'm born offside I can't tell you the amount of times I've sat with two Chelsea supporters yeah and we've been trying to diagnose what their problem is wow because their team on paper is fantastic they've spent so much money mm. um you look at the history of the club there's a lot of pressure to perform they're just it, it's there's so much pressure yeah. on this club and now everybody knows how much they've spent and then they've had all of these issues, you know, in the off season as well. Like financial confusion, I suppose, for people that are looking from the outside. Why are you spending so much money but not producing results? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I genuinely cannot tell you <laughs> what the problem is. I think where Chelsea went right was, and you said it earlier, about United, but it's using the younger guys. It's creating... Um, you know, Chelsea are well known for what their academy can produce. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, when Lampard was forced to kind of use the young guys, granted they weren't getting results, but we saw the likes of, you know, Mount and whatnot come through. Tammy Abraham yeah. as well. Yeah, there's so much potential in that approach. 
And I wonder if you almost go back to the basics and you start focusing on the talent that is there at the mm. club and, you know, looking at what Arteta's done with Arsenal, trying to replicate that. Mm. Yeah, and I think what I've, I've emphasised, you know, throughout almost every week we talk about Chelsea is experience. I think the one thing that United are halfway there, they've got those experienced players that mm. have helped lead the way, you know. As we saw, he had all these youngsters on. Mm. And he was able to actually throw Bruno and Eriksson so far back because they're experienced. Chelsea are missing that. Chelsea, aside from Thiago Silva, that's it. They There's don't no have any. But Thiago is like almost too, too old. old. Yeah, like not to not to be ageist. Yeah, but yeah, he was on crutches. Yeah, he was on crutches in the ninety minutes. <laughs> but yeah. you can also be too experienced. True. Yeah. To the point where being there, done that, you don't have the same passion anymore. Okay, you look at the midfield. You got, I think, that an average age about 22, 23. Mm. It's young. It's you know, you look at your front line. Aside from Raheem Sterling. I think we, we were looking at it earlier this year. Raheem Sterling, Thiago Silva, are the, not 29, 38? 38, 38, 38 yeah. yeah. Everyone else is 26 and below. Shit. Mm. There is no leadership, and I think that's the biggest thing they need. Look at what we've done. We signed Jorginho. 12 mm. mil, experienced player. He's able to help players like Rice, you know, alleviate yeah. that pressure. He's able, even at the back, when you've got... You don't have to be old to be experienced. No, you're right. No, no, true. Zinchenko and Jesus played a big part last season in our rise to the... No, you, you're the absolutely right. And look at that Liverpool side that won a few weeks ago. Yeah. Playing pretty much our reserve grade team. Like yeah. a, what is our kind of emerging players? Because they were led by Van Dyke at the back. Yeah. That we experience apart, is crucial. We fell apart. Yeah. <coughs> no. you you got to remember as well, he's got a young keeper behind him too. Mm. Or not by young, I mean, not as experienced. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure Kalea is actually like 26, 27. Yeah, but he's obviously not as experienced as Alisson yeah, yeah, and yeah. whatnot, right? Like when yeah. you, you're comparing the two, it's very clear who you'd feel more comfortable in yeah. that position. No, oh, it's fair. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Did we just solve Chelsea's problem though? No. <laughs> I think I think they need to go down to Mounties, pick up a few experienced <laughs> yeah. players, throw them in between. They might be able to help them a Maybe bit of Maybe some resolve. of these Sydney Olympic boys. I keep saying Sydney Olympic. Sydney, Sydney United. United. Yes, yes. So uh, you, you can get Boban, who's the currently the uh, yes. vice vice president of AC Milan. You can get him in there. So <laughs> I'm I'm on a bit of a roll with segues today. Speaking of another Sydney team, mm. uh, Sydney FC. Well done. Good segue. What's oh, your What's you. your thought? On those of Sydney FC, who, where, where do your personal allegiances stand? So I was traditionally a Sydney FC supporter. I'm about to say something that is absolute blasphemy. Oh, oh my God. Mm, yeah. I'm excited about this possibly. So then I started working on Dub Zone, which is the A-League women's show. Yep. And once again, when you work in the game, you've got to try and be as objective as possible. And, you know, I'm sitting next to Kath Canooley every other week and she's so passionate about Western Sydney Wanderers. And you're kind of seeing the same display from Sydney FC every year. It's like they're always dominant yep. in the women's game and, um, you know, Western United were a contender for a moment. But I'm kind of looking at Western Sydney and going, something really beautiful about this club. And I kind of started to feel myself switching a little bit. And all of my cousins support Western Sydney and they've always said, come with us, come be part of the RVB. <laughs> I don't know where I sit in terms of that, but I, I think as I've grown older, I've got a real appreciation for Western Sydney and kind of what their journey has been like. And also the fact that they are kind of like the melting pot of so, so many cultures in, in this area. So you did a reverse Abdul. I did a well reverse. Well done. <gasps> Well done. See, did you? No, okay. So let you me, grew up Western Sydney. No, no, no. Let me give you. Born and raised in Greenacre. Listen, 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 listen. Let me give her Greenacre. a bit of a backstory. Let me give her a bit of back. Make a back it quick, because I've I've got a bin bag behind me and I'm ready to vomit. So quick. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it for six it's, weeks. Okay. As you can tell, you know who's. I'm cut. Sports. I'm Fair Western enough. Sydney. So, I didn't necessarily, I'd say, follow follow the A League. Yeah. When I was, you know, 12, 13, 14. So, if you would have asked me back then, I would have said Sydney FC. Mm. It's always been Sydney FC. Mm. Once I started getting into the A League and got to know these boys properly. I'm like, all right, I'll give us a Sydney and go. It makes sense. Yeah. You know, it, it makes sense. Six weeks in, I just couldn't. Remember. I'm like, bruv, or as, as I want to say, brev. Brev. Uh, brev. <laughs> they can't do it, brev. <laughs> Kat, put it this way. I, I opened my, my, m the door to my house for him. He walked in there, decided it, looked at it. Maybe he had a, had a spit or a vomit on it and then went back out. The way I like to see no, it. That's the, how it was. The way I like to see Disgusting. it is I went back to my ex. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to go back to your ex. Sydney of C1, Wellington Phoenix 2. <laughs> look, that look um, unfortunately, Sydney FC couldn't get the win this week. I'm very proud. Um, but, dear God, like... You can't not be impressed with Phoenix, though. 
They're doing it. They're doing it for for New Zealand, and I think we're giving an, another New Zealand teams coming in next season. Auckland, yeah. mate. Um, yeah. They might kickstart something. Yeah. New Zealand might be a new melting point for football. And as we've said, if Australia doesn't take that opportunity in the men's game, New Zealand might just yeah, they should. Yeah, why not? And and to be honest with you, like before we move on to how good Wellington was, Sydney FC really took it to Wellington. Mm. Like statistically, if you look at it. We had a lot more of the better play. We had a lot more shots. And I'll go back to say it, I think it was quality versus quantity. I think Wellington didn't need that much possession. I think I found it said that 75 of the attacking uh, momentum went Sydney's way in the first half. What was the score? It was 1 0 Sydney's way. The, the, end the, of the final game. score. We know it's 2 1. Okay, well, <laughs> but, you can have all the chances. Let, let me, let me, sorry, <laughs> before you shit on my club. Uh, <laughs> Phoenix actually had 66% of their passes in their own half that game. Mm. Yet they still, the way, if you go and watch the way they actually played out out of the back and just clearly cut through Sydney, despite how Sydney, how good Sydney have been these last, you know, six to eight weeks, they genuinely looked like a top quality. They were playing elite football, even though they did not have much of the ball and they were playing in their half most of the time. Mm. That shows the signs of a good team. And, and it's similar to how you look at the teams at Jose, some of the best Jose teams. Mm. They did not need much of the ball. They did not it's, need yeah, much of the possession. What you do with the ball Correct. when you have it. So, yeah. question to you: Do you reckon they make the top four? FC? Sydney. Yeah. I think Sydney. If if any team every season has the capacity to do it, it's Sydney. Mm. So I, I I think it's it's fair to say that of all the clubs, you know, they've got the strongest history. Yeah. They've been here before. Yeah. They'll do it again. Melbourne Victory might have a might have a say about that. Yeah, but I mean, victory in their own right are just as big as Sydney FC in that mm. sense. I think, um, I don't look. Yes, my but the short answer is yes. Yes, I do think that they have capacity to make top four. Look, they they're not far off third now as well. No, they've got a game in hand. If they win that game, they go one point behind third, Macarthur, mm. and fourth place is on the same points, mm. which I'm pretty sure it's Melbourne victory in third. Yeah, uh, in fourth, sorry. Victories in fourth. fourth. Yep. You know, MacArthur surprised me this year. Yeah, me too. Very, very shocked. Same. But, but you think about it, Davila, mm. German, you, they got the French guy. Mille's a top coach. Mm. Yeah. Zajoski's a top coach. So sh um, I'm shocked, but I'm shocked that actually the area, I'm still a bit shocked how the fans haven't gotten behind them. And ev everyone's still like, like Wellington's obviously, Wellington's stolen all the limelight, obviously. And yeah. rightly so. Yeah. yeah. But MacArthur's like, dare I say it, Bit of an underdog. Oh no, definitely they are. And they, they can almost call them quiet achievers. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't hear much people going out to the games there. You don't even see much of it on social media. No. No. Yeah. Any. I have been to a few games against Macarthur. Like, I haven't gone out supporting Macarthur, yeah. but yeah. you know, I've seen them as the opposition. There's never many fans in the crowd, and and I don't think I've ever met a Macarthur fan in my life. Why? <laughs> no, that's a lie. <laughs> so that's Maddie Yermans. Sister? Oh, yeah. oh yes, yeah, Matty yeah. Herman's sister, when he moved from Jets to MacArthur, yep. became a Western United, yeah, a Western a MacArthur fan. A MacArthur fan. I think a Western United, a MacArthur fan. Yeah. Now, nah, um, to be fair though, yeah, they're, they're, they're quite achievers, and right now they're doing Sydney's work. By Sydney, I mean the city of Sydney. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. the best team to represent our city at the moment, and unfortunately, it's neither my club or your club. So we'll, we'll come back. Unfortunately, we'll well, hey, my club could topple them. So. Who knows your club? Mate, speaking of a of a club that could that could almost do the double is FC, Sydney FC four, Wellington Phoenix two. Yeah, mate, they're, they're an absolute machine. Steamrod Ante Ante you uh, Juric has got him absolutely mm. <laughs> to a T. He's such a good coach. He's like, incredible, and He's so good. Their left back Fenton got injured, confirmed yes. ACL. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big loss. Scary times, but it's like they've got the next one. You They've see had a couple of bad injuries with like that Tobin, Tobin being Tobin. out as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's Fen incredible. Fenton's going to be a big loss. Like her her composure at the back mm. and when you watch her, her ability to know when to step up and when to not and when to tuck in and when to, to hold back like last week against um, Western United or two weeks ago, sorry. Mm. She just 90 second, 91st minute stepped up Found Vine with just a cross ball across the field. Beautiful. Yeah. And then Vine on the cheek. Like, she's so well composed and experienced. And it helps her centre back. Mm. They've got by far... Sydney FC have only conceded 15 goals this season. <sighs> Mate, wow. Ch Chelsea are 4 or 5. <laughs> 22... I think they played 22 games. But yeah, wow. For me, though, she her best game was against the Wanderers in the derby. Mm. She was an absolute weapon that game. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, and 
speaking of the the girl that debuted in that game as well, she started. Kaylee Talon mm. Um Solid. Yeah, 18. Um, she started alongside Abby Lemon. So Abby Lemon was on the left. Vine actually played more centrally this game. Mm. And Talon Henneke started on the right. Um, they still killed it. Uh, Ibini wasn't playing. Uh, I'm not sure. I think she she must be injured. I didn't. I could try to find why yeah. why she missed the game, but it was not about cool. injury. Yeah, I mean s- sometimes players just get benched. It's another player's opportunity to play. That's it. The sad part is, there's only five people on the bench. They allow. Mm. Why? Like, expand it. Yeah. You know, you're in the men's game. You're allowed seven, so eight, 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 eight now. I remember when I was working on Dub Zone. So this was the 2022 season, 2022 mm. into 23 season. There was a whole drama around, I believe it was Brisbane Raw that played like an extra bench spot. Like they, someone had. Wow. And it was so convoluted and ridiculous. And if you're listening to this, I encourage you to like go look it up and see what happened because it's kind of like one story in a very long season. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's just so. It needs to just level up with the men's game. For Did they sure. get deducted yeah. any points or anything? They or did. Was any f- they wow. had points deducted. They, they do it in every sport. Do you remember as well? I don't know if you remember the 2009 Ooh, season. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when the Bulldogs got deducted two points? Because I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't look at me. I don't follow that sport. I and remember. I Andrew Ryan was trying to get off yeah. the field and that cost us the minor premiership. But yeah, and we wouldn't have had to play Parramatta. Actually, we would have been the first. Leg of the you still holding on to that? or? But I, mate. Tim Manor, mate. I just saw a, t- a tear in his eye, didn't you? <laughs> Listen, I, I, mate. It's a bit dusty from, to be honest. From one Lebanese person to another, I oh love God. Tim Manor. Great, great representation you of our community. You have to love Tim Manor. But when you scored that try under the post, I just... Yeah. It broke me. Still haven't recovered, if you can tell. Mate, mate, for me, the game over. For me, I, what I want to talk about is the news that we've heard. And I'm sure, even if you're not a football fan, what's going to happen in May in Melbourne? What's going to oh. happen is... Is so exciting. It's called Global Football Week for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't have picked three better words to describe it. You've got Tottenham versus uh, Newcastle United on the 22nd of May. And then you've got at 5.15, you've got uh, the men's A-League All-Stars versus Newcastle United. And then the headliner, mm. the feature act, yeah. the, dub, uh, the women's A-League All-Stars mm-hmm. against the Arsenal women's team. Which is basically another Australian team. <laughs> It's so exciting. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. Kat, obviously you've been around that all week. What's oh. your what's your thoughts? And what's the office chat describing around that? Is, uh, are you excited? Have you booked your tickets yet? Playing, playing tickets or sort oh, of? I'm definitely going to do my best to get there. But it's fair to say that off the back of the Women's World Cup, there was so much momentum around this Arsenal women's team because they obviously have so many of those. Ford, Matildas. Got, yeah. yeah. You've got Steph Catley, Kat, Kat Ford, like you said. Anyway, yeah. Um, it's just so exciting. I think I'm glad that they're doing it soon enough after the World Cup. Mm. There's still a bit of momentum around yep. it. But uh, I love this because I don't think I ever envisioned that at my age now I would see so much excitement around women's football. Yeah. I'm more excited for the women's game than I am the men's yes. game. Yes. Yep. Like it, it's just – it's it's insane. And you know, we were talking off air as well. You know, the more you get into this women's game, the more you actually fall in love with it. And then, and it's crazy. Like I'm, I love Sydney FC, but I'm actually more keen to head out to Leichhardt Oval to mm. watch the girls mm. nowadays more than it is Dalian Stadium. Like you feel a lot more. It's a closer yeah. community. Say petrol, mate. Oh, that too. <laughs> but I just I want to I want to go back on one on one thing. Um, in terms of you know women's football and the development there, um, Ante Juric has done very 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 well with that squad. So yeah. is he going to coach the? All stars. Oh. Uh, that's the question to you. I, I think he should. I think he should. The, the way, just, just to point it out. So he has six players under 18 or under in that team. Um, Jasmine Black, the goalkeeper. Uh, midfielder number 10, Sienna Saveska. She's 17. Uh, Shay Holman, 18. Uh, Maddie Kaspers, uh, Holly's sister. Yep. Uh, she's just turned 17, I think. Um, attacker, she's got a sister as well. Indiana Dos Santos. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's 16, and then Kaylee Talon who we're seeing more of at the know, moment. Do you want to know something funny? I met Indiana Dos Santos at an event, and I was fangirling over her. Mm. <laughs> and I just realized I'm like 15 years older than her. Have you I was seen like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, this girl is 16. I think she, she was 15 at the time when I met her. Yeah. She's and a talent. I just 
I can't get my head around it, you know, and I've obviously seen her doing her thing on the football pitch and I cannot believe her age. Did you feel old in that moment? I feel old all the time. <laughs> Thomas, mate. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I'm 23, I look 15. So I look, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's bigger back, back on track. Listen, anyway, look, the core of that team is fairly young still. Um, they've got Ray Chauvet and Hawkesbury. For me, Hawkesbury's been insane yeah. this season. Uh, she's like the general of that midfield and she's very young herself. She's only, um, I think, 21, averaging age of 21, 22. Um, and then you've got Vine. Vine's 25. Like it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a crazy development and the way they've utilised their paths and, mm. and the academy they've got and also dipping into the universities as well. So they've got the universities, the clubs around them. Yeah. They've been able to actually... It's all a feeder system. Yeah. That's all it is. They've taken the Queensland route and as we talked about yeah. a couple of weeks ago where Queensland... I think we've seen 10 Matildas come out of the, the Institute of uh, Sport in Queensland. Mm. So they've taken that route. They've utilised their facilities to, to basically get the most out of it. And it's showing now. They haven't, I think they've lost one game since December 10th. It's unbelievable. And, and they've been able to rotate the team. And that's the important thing. Whereas Western United, who lost again this week, have now fallen off the top of the table. And Sydney FC have gone first. Because you look at that Western United team. What's the points difference? Um... Sydney United, uh, so Sydney United, Sydney FC are now on 36 points, I believe, but they're a point ahead of second and third. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but, like I said, in other words, it takes them prime position to win the minor premiership. Um, Melbourne City played out a draw with Melbourne Victory and Western United, as I said, succumbed to another uh, res another defeat and there's two weeks of the season left. So, I don't understand what's gone wrong over there. They were, you know, top Momentum, of the mate, Momentum. Yeah, but they were top of the league for so long and they were so mm. dominant. Um, when the Wanderers picked up another win as well. The men's and the women's this weekend. So Question is, are we going to see you on Saturday? At Blacktown. Rudy Hill, mate. Oh, I, I, need to, I need to go. Don't call me out on a podcast. <laughs> I need. You know what? I'm going to go to a game with you guys. Let's go to one. What are you doing on Sunday? Is that when you're going? Like to, I'm going to like on Saturday night. Do you want to go again on I'm Sunday? I'm going for Tigers game. Oh, well, they're playing Sunday 4 p.m., I believe. All right, we'll talk after this. Okay, we'll sort it out. We'll sort but it I, out. I, we, we're going to get to a game together. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm down to do this. And A Champions League game together or? Look, I'm happy to do it. Oh, if Kat's, if Kat's willing to shout out tickets and then and, 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 and flights and accommodation, I, I'm happy to see wow, you. Wow, all of a sudden I'm a baller. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, one of us works at Optus, the other does <laughs> uh, What do you mean? She walked in and I heard ka-ching, ka-ching, ka <laughs> um, oh, Before God. we move on to the Champions League, I do want to go over your club once again. Um, we have to. Lauren James, my friend, far out. She absolutely like wiped the floor with the Arsenal team. She's like, on fire, bro. I'm not even going to call fire. it a WSL game. I'm going to call it the Lauren James show. Because from the offset, we just couldn't deal with it. Yeah. You know? Um, scored a first goal. I talk about it again, Zinsberger. Mm. <sighs> like, there's a reason she's why not she there. got dropped, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, she's, it's killing me, man. You know, she's. Oh, God, I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> You said you might be full. Oh, no, I told you I'm very clumsy. It was going to happen. Uh, well, yeah. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's getting to that time of the day. Hold on. Zinsberger seemed to be clumsy on the weekend as well. So it makes two of you. What can I say? Um, She's not an Arsenal fan. Tom, Tom, it was a close range shot. I like Arsenal women's though. Yeah. Great team. Superstars. Absolute superstars. The most mm. stacked team in a WSL, and I say that with By chest. By far, yeah, I agree. With chest. But when you're taking a shot from close range and you're telling me you can't necessarily catch it mm. or parry it, in front of you. She did a salam special. Oh, no, I'm not that bad. <laughs> okay. She literally parried it up above her into the back of the net and then couldn't get up quick enough. And by the time she got up, uh, Wibben Moy was already there and it was too late. The ball's in the back of the net. That made it 1 0. Cuthbert then found uh, Nun was that Nunkin? Uh, Nuskin mm. um, for goal number two. And then what made it even worse is the third goal. Um, Nuskin wasn't even. Involved in it, it hit her butt. Yeah, on the way in, it, it was a lot of uh, lucky deflections. But like I said, if if it goes in, it goes in. It's as simple it as that. a goal. But man, just it, Ruben Moy didn't look comfortable every time she stepped up. She's just not one of those centre backs that steps up. I'll tell you where it started. <laughs> when the Arsenal team bus rocked up to Stanford Bridge, and the kit man realised, oh shit, I might lose my job today. <laughs> the brother was there, and they didn't bring their socks. That's where it started. Apparently, 
Chelsea, have you heard the story that the Chelsea megastore actually doubled down? <laughs> they double charged them for the socks. Oh, have, you, uh, have you heard that? That's messed up. They double charged. <laughs> double charged. Them. Now that is Mourinho mind games. That's hilarious. <laughs> Mourinho, don't you, no one can tell me now that Mourinho still hasn't got his footprint on that. Why club. couldn't they just change socks to blue socks themselves? Like, yeah. uh, Chelsea. Why would we? We're the home team. It's it our is. club. It's Who cares? socks. Just because it's your team doesn't mean it's we have to socks. change for you. Rules are Convenient. rules, though. Rules Facts. are rules. Sportsmanship, as they like to call it. No about. sportsmanship. You're winning. <laughs> yeah. Simple as that. There's a hand. <laughs> Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, oh, God. Look. <laughs> oh, God. Look, I have to say, um, a few, you know, as Statman likes to do, oh, here a we few go. stats on Jesus. Lauren James. And this is how No, I love this because I'm a big Lauren James fan. So she had seven shots, ten jewels won. Eight dribbles completed, scored a goal, and absolutely wiped the floor. The one that she dribbled at, like she's literally from top to the bottom of the pitch involved in everything. And right now, she's the heartbeat of mm. everything good with them. So I think, okay, I'm going to put it to you since you're self-proclaimed Lauren James mm. fangirl. Is she the best player in the WSL at the moment? In the WSL, aside so from Kerr, uh, she's not playing currently at the moment. Yeah, but. I'll, I'll be a little bit controversial right now. Sam Kerr, to me, is not, like, the best player in the WSL. Mm. Second in the ball, though? No. I would pick Lauren James any day. Like, if somebody Ooh, said... Beth pick, Mead. No one makes it look easier than Lauren James. Yeah. I, I, I beg you to find me a player, in even in the men's game, that makes it look easier than Lauren James. Anthony against Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to do it. Seriously, <laughs> okay, <maybe>. sorry. Yes. <laughs> Lauren James, I've never seen a more blase player. Wow. You look at her and you're like, she's she looks like she's barely moving. She looks she's like she got no, care. she's expressionless. But then you look at her feet and you're like, how are you doing all of that? <laughs> yeah. And how are you making it look so easy? Because when I do that, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> and no. I my tongue sticking out because I'm like concentrating and stuff. Like she just looks so collected and I don't understand So the real, qu the real question is, the fans want to know, mm. have you got more goals in your career than Lauren James does? That's that's what the fans want to know. I've been told. No, no, no. Depends who she's playing against. So you're playing against your little cousins or you're playing against <laughs> hey, hey. Don't underestimate my little cousins. <laughs> Pele, Pele counted all the goals. So I'm, I'm sure Kat's counted all the goals as well. Yeah. Actually, you reckon you scored more? In my... Nah, they're not that impressive. Far out, you're really calling me out today. <laughs> in my we last try. season that I played for the Strathfield Strikers... Mm. Shout out to you over there. Um, <laughs> I was the top goal scorer. For the club or for the team? For my club. Like for oh, the wow. team. Sorry, no, like for okay. my team. Oh my gosh. I'm just digging a hole for myself. <laughs> How many goals? I think I got 20 or something. <laughs> oh, wow. No, that's good. That's, that's, that's more than my whole life, to be honest. Oh, really? Yes. No, like I, I had some games where I would get a couple. And so every game where I got two made up for one where I might not score. But So Nicholas Jackson, basically. Basically. Okay. She's getting yeah. Luke numbers. Oh, God. <laughs> Didn't he get 22 last season? That's the striker go. on our team. Oh, there you go. He got like 22, 23. He's the guy. So, speaking of Luke, Champions League. He sh he, we should get him signed up to the Champions League. Yeah, I, th I think so. To Arsenal, because Luke, Arsenal is going to need Luke to beat Bayern Munich. Let's, let's, let's play out the draw for those who, I'm sure everyone in the world saw it, given how I think rigged it was. Um, so on one side of the draw, we've got Atletico Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, PSG and Barcelona. On the other side, Arsenal, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid and Man City. So Arsenal play uh, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid play Man City, Atletico play Dortmund and then PSG play Barca. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. You it's could, You could not have had that <laughs> any more like picture perfect mm -hmm. for the other side of the draw. For Barca to send Xavi away with a trophy. But before we go in, there's a script. And as I say, Rick, there's a script every year. Okay. So, it took Arsenal 14 years to get past the first round of the uh, group stage. <laughs> Not the group okay. stage, sorry. The uh, quarterfinal. The round of 16. My bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, who do they play next? Bayern Munich. The <laughs> team that spanked them 5-1. <laughs> Three <laughs> times <laughs> in a row. <laughs> Hold on. They get past Bayern Munich. Here's what I think. They're more than likely going to play Manchester City. Will Mikel Arteta beat his former mentor? We will see. Look at the script. He beats Pep Guardiola. Oh, God, here we go. Who does he play in the final? Barcelona. 
in 2006 in a controversial loss. <sighs> what happened? They could have won the Champions League. They didn't. And I'm telling you, this is scripted to go all the way through to the end. Well, I'm telling you. For Mikel Arteta and his Gunners to lift that Champions Thierry League. Thierry and Ray can't jump from CBS onto the field, so he can't help you there. That's that's the only problem. Listen, um, You're saying that's a key factor oh, to what's missing on. in Absolutely. this Absolutely. That's, that's the only Coming, coming, coming the from the, the flukiest Champions League I've seen in my life in 2020. How many have you got? Uh, we've got a cup in this cup in 1975. Answer my question. How many UEFA Champions Leagues have you got? None. Brother, no, you... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You've never seen that uh, final ball ever, besides in Australia. You, you, you've never, you, you have never played, played. Oh God, you've never played with that final ball ever. With that final ball, correct. That's fine. Never, and That's you never fine. will. And my club, and it won't be this year. And my club's got history and dignity, and I can hold myself back and say that my club existed pre two thousand and four when a so called Roman Abramovich bought your club. Mm. Your club can't hold itself, and don't don't mention the the FA Cup that you won in nineteen ninety six that Claude's mentioned about ten weeks ago. Your club pre two thousand and four was irrelevant. Nottingham Forest had more history than your club pre two thousand and four. Spell your way for Champions League. Spell it. Oh, can't spell it with that Chelsea. Spell it. Sp sp oh, here we go. Spell it. You can't spell it. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> Kat, you are the guest. So last time we had we had Kev on, he predicted the Asian Champions League. Mm -hmm. Give us your so you've got the draw in front of you. Give us your draw. So give us your from Let me pull it up and round of sixteen, myself. quarters, semis and final. Oh and do you, want, do you want me to give you game by game? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just I'm you know what I'm gonna go. Yeah, it's hey. just just your. Do you like how I did that? What, what's what's that word? Um, it's giving, like it's giving an Arsenal win. Yeah. 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 What? When you say what? no, 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 no. When if you're walking around and like you know you're walking with an aura, you'd be like, what well, Arsenal? You say it's giving, it's giving like. Give the draw, mate. <laughs> They're not winning. Give the draw. Go. Anyway, Arsenal by Munich. I love how you start with that. Arsenal. Oh my god. Okay, go. Respect. Atletico Borussia Dortmund. Atletico. PSG Barca. Barca. And Real Madrid Man City. The big one. Real Madrid. Yes. Well done. Atletico Barca. Barca. Arsenal in the final? Sure. Arsenal Real Madrid. The, yes, the bias is ended. Thank it's God. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Imagine an El Clasico. El Clasico. What a Champions final. League final. Champions what League a final. final. I think I know the answer to this one. It's Real Madrid, isn't it? History would tell you when it's Champions League that it's most likely yeah. Real. That but cat's opinion I'm is back Barca on this. Wow, one. be cool. Yeah, be cool. It's yeah. I think I agree with you on that side of the draw. I think we've. I would have gone. I think Man City going to get Madrid. I think Madrid. Do you know what? I I literally answered because I don't want to see City win. Yeah, back and, to back. And I don't want to see Real win. So I was happy for City to beat Real, but Real. What's your agenda with Madrid? Um. In terms of Spanish clubs, mm. it's Barca for me. Oh, okay. oh dear Lord. Yes. Oh, no. So who's your go, Messi or Ronaldo? I hate... Lauren James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the comparison of Messi and Ronaldo because I see their careers as being such, so different. And I think Messi, Messi can do things with a ball that he's like in, it's not human. Mm. Like he has a natural ability that is so far beyond anything that we've really seen in this generation. Yeah. Ronaldo for me, def definition of hard work, definition of natural ability, but then pushing yourself to achieve the most yeah. you could ever achieve. And so for me, they represent two very different approaches to the game. And Messi, you know, for majority of his career was a one club guy. Yep. Ronaldo was able to dominate in so many different leagues. So for me, I, I've always said, I feel like they're really different. And if anything, they complement each other because you can see what two incredible players could do if they stay at a club or if they decide to go and dominate in different leagues. Well, we asked this question no answer. last week. I don't even answer. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to possibly not force an answer, but <laughs> start bench cell. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Messi, God. Ronaldo, Maradona. <laughs> oh, Maradona. Well, apparently that <laughs> actually makes me feel physically ill. Don't 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 give her my answer from last week. <sighs> that time. makes me feel ill trying to trying to do this. Who are you selling? Talk to us, Cat. No, who are you starting first? That's the question. But I mean, Maradona did what he did, like taking drugs <laughs> and like not even like oh, barely God. working out. She's not wrong. The brother the, the brother has unfortunately left the earth. He can't, he can't 
But this is a, these are known facts about him. That it's, it's true. It was he, <laughs> he wasn't the health, healthiest guy and that he didn't have conventional approaches. I mean, I've spoken to people that have played against him and met him in change rooms and said that he was cooked. But the natural ability was enough for him to do what he did and go, you know, go partying at night and wake up and play like that the next day. So like, on, the, on the infamous UBF start cell, uh, start cell, <laughs> start bench cell, cell. Where does he where, where does on he a, fit there? Based on a culture that I want to cultivate at my club, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sell, 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 sell. I'm gonna sell Maradona. All right, so now is the big answer. Here we go. I'm gonna bench Ronaldo and play Messi. Oh no. So this one, this one's a sell Messi. Last week. You sold Messi. Yeah, yeah. Lionel freaking Messi. Some you know what though? Like that's the beauty of football. Some would say everybody's I allowed beauty. an opinion. <laughs> some, I think it's ludicrous. Some would say I have an agenda. There is an agenda. I like to I like to disagree. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Disagree. So you want to debate me right now? <laughs> what do you like? What do you what do you think about my decision to sell Maradona based on the culture that I want to cultivate at my club, by the I way? I just think Messi has been protected for so long mm. that it's honestly hampered on Ronaldo's career to a degree. Because look at the team he's always played around. Look at the, the Ballon d'Or votes. Ballon d'Or votes are journalist votes at the end of the, the day. The Ballon d'Or to me is, yeah. is kind of, but that's it's his, a bit whatever. But that's his, the sad part is that's his strongest selling point. He's got eight Ballon d'Ors and Ronaldo's got five. Ronaldo's deserved every single one that he's gotten. Whereas you look at um, Messi, I could name about four that he shouldn't have won. Van Dijk should have won it the year he won it. Yeah, that, that, that I'll agree with because I'm <laughs> Van Dijk's biggest fan. Harder last year. <laughs> Has he got an aura? Sorry, Van Dijk? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't want to make it weird, but he's got an aura. Maybe that's a different podcast, sorry. <laughs> so, but like a, like a, like as, um, in terms of a defending ability, because I think he's a, he's a top defender, don't get me wrong. But I think he's, he's, the way he uses his body and the way he physically scares players. Yeah, he's hmm. intimidating. I think that's his biggest, I, I don't. No, I think you're right. I think there's better defenders. Like, like maybe technical ability, yes. yes. Mate. Definitely, you could. He can defend Haaland, but can he defend Kat Haddad at Sheffield Strikers <laughs> in twenty goals a season? Honestly, I'd see him and I'd be stopped in my tracks. So it's like, just be like, he's the ball. I think it's all yours. <laughs> that. Um, oh god. In, <laughs> in all, in all honesty, I just just to sum it up, where I was where I was at before. I think that you know, you look at that Ballon d'Or, you look at Haaland last year, you look at. The Spanish era in 2010, I don't think he deserved to win it. Even though, yes, I know there was a season he had 91 goals. Xavi and Iniesta, what they done for Spain, for what they done for Barca. Mm. Look at the year uh, Ribéry mm. should have taken it out. There's a year that Snyder should have taken he it out. He is a good looking guy. Ribéry? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I'll, 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 I was waiting for you to clock He's that, by the way. totally yeah. a joke. I'm like, he might have, you know, the cameras might not help. You know how they say sometimes the camera puts on like, you know. No. I don't think I blame the camera for that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, so you're, I'm so you're blaming the car accident that he had. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I think he, we're gonna, I went low. He went uh, low. Listen, I think I think we're gonna we're Frank gonna, We're gonna leave it there for um, Thomas. What was a car accident of a comment? Um, <laughs> that was good. Uh, look, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, you know, ball. And you're showing everyone out there that women do know ball as well. Um, we're going to do a deep dive, a lot about women in sport. And yeah, hopefully this isn't the last time I have you on because it's it's definitely been a pleasure, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. for me too. Absolutely. No, it's a, it's a pleasure. And I think there's no better sort of first female that we wanted because we'll be honest, when, when we started, especially that Women 23 World Cup and the blogs that you wrote, there's no sort of person that we sort of connected with that you – you got a sim sort of similar style to us, the the banter there. Mm. And we, we try not to take this podcast so seriously. And your little expertise and your little professionalism just adds that little touch that we were looking for. So it's been a pleasure yeah. oh, from, myself so and from myself and from myself. And even on, on that point as well, like I've always said, it's nice seeing, I'm Lebanese, mm. you're Lebanese as well. It's nice seeing- We'll get a creation on one day besides the end. <laughs> we've already had the <laughs> the end. Uh, But it's, it's nice seeing other Lebanese people in our community actually. Definitely. Go out and, and represent and represent well. So- Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Look, we're going to end it there. Um, we have been UBF. I've been Abs. And I have been Thomas and special guest today. Cat. Last day. <laughs> <laughs> <Her dad. laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, oh my god, the Frank Ruby was bad. I clocked halfway. <laughs> nah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs>